Welcome to Family Mysteries 1, Poison Promises. And I'm joined by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Mark, there's just one more thing I have to do before I go. I need to know what the family mystery was all along. So we begin on a yacht. This man's name is Mark Brent. Mark is aboard the yacht with his fiance Veronica Gore and Veronica's sister Eleanor Gore and their father Al Gore. Mark gives gifts to Eleanor and Veronica. These are for you. Oh Mark, thank you. Why is he wearing a full formal shirt while they are so scantily clad? Maybe they're the clothes inside the box. Here's some nice shirts. And the three then clink their champagne glasses together aggressively. Oh, we are going to have such a happy and bright future title screen. Collector's edition, what the oh. heck? Here we are at a detective's office. We play as Emma Emerson. <laughs> that sucks. Let me tell you, she is the world's greatest detective. So she is working from home, and she's just about to wrap up for the evening. The rest of the evening is all about soft classical music and relaxing. But then, ring ring, she gets a call from Duke. <laughs> What's up with all the spam? Swim with the sharks. Isn't it usually that you're Yeah, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. <laughs> the shark's not supposed to be in the cage. <laughs> Look at this photo over here, by the way. Look how close they are. Do you think they're a couple? Or <laughs> yeah, that's just the academy. Everybody's like that. <laughs> so we clear the pop-ups and answer Duke's call. What does he want? I know it's your day off, and I'm sorry to bother you, partner, but I have a drowning victim that looks ominous. Emma, I'm working on a case right now. Someone's drowned and it looks very suspicious. I'm gonna need your help. I just finished my shift. Duke is sending a police driver around right now. So Emma heads downstairs and she gets into the back, <laughs> which is traditionally where you put the criminals. This is a special type of police car. It's a police Uber. When they're low on crime, they gotta make money somehow. The officer driving gives her a case file. We open that case file and it says, a yacht exploded at sea tonight, and Mark and Elena survived, but Veronica, Mark's fiance, is missing. A nearby coast guard received an SOS signal from the yacht at 9.13 p.m. The case file also states that the body of a Jane Doe washed ashore very recently. I don't see how that's relevant. Jane Doe's are completely different. Different people. Well, we've arrived, detective. We get to the crime scene, and Duke is already there. And he says, ah, we've already got the body bag, and here it is. So Emma starts investigating, and she starts with where the body was found, in this big pile of trash. <laughs> Cut the turtle loose, <laughs> what? The evidence is getting away. <laughs> now, in that spot, she finds a locket, and on the locket is engraved, Veronica, you're the best, Elaine. Then Emma goes to investigate the body. Oh my god, she throws up at the sight of the mangled corpse. But then suddenly, Veronica's dad shows up. <laughs> no! My beautiful Veronica, my daughter. His name's Stan Gore, and he's the owner of a bank. Remember Stan Gore? You saw it in the pop-ups. In fact, all of the pop-ups relate to something in the story of this game. Big spoilers. Anyway, Gore is sad because his daughter is dead. Lamau. I can withdraw millions of dollars in loans in the span of a minute, but I can't deposit a soul back into my daughter's body. It's confirmed now this is Veronica and not Jane Doe. Emma is now like investigating the body. There are green lines all around Veronica's mouth. So Emma takes a swab and she does a quick taste test. And then she looks at Veronica's watch. Ah, very valuable. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's broken. It broke at 8.55. That's probably the time that Veronica landed in the water. Aren't most watches nowadays waterproof? Shut though? up, your majesty. <laughs> but Mark and Elena only sent out an SOS at 9.13 p.m. That means 18 minutes later. What's up with such a big delay? 
Emma jumps into the back of the ambulance. Time to test a sample. And she goes, aha, it's histamine toxicity. What is histamine toxicity? You know, like when you've got hay fever and you take antihistamines? Mm -hmm. No way, I got it. They're on the yacht. It's lovely and sunny. And they go, would you like an ice cream? And they go, sure. We've got five flavors. It's like vanilla, chocolate, histamine. (laughs) Lime. And she goes, oh, one of lime and one of histamine, please. And they go, wait, no. But it's too late. (laughs) It's called an anaphylactic surprise. So Emma goes, ah, Dr. Watson, I shall go to the hospital and question Mark and Elena. Surely I shall extract the truth from them. Chapter two. Emma arrives at the hospital and she goes to question Elena. And outside Elena's room is Mark. And he's screaming, I'll kill her. Get out of my way. Let me go. Duke is standing there and he's trying to stop him. Mark then pushes Duke to the ground. So, oh my God, that's justification to start firing. Nobody knocks down my partner. And so Emma gets into a fight with Mark. First, block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Discombobulate. She's pretty tough. Mark uses his brute strength to knock her back. This push knocks Emma out. But then Emma is saved by a handsome doctor. Oh, nice and easy, detective. He talks like the G-man. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Here, that angry man dropped this. The doctor says, well, here you go, Emma. It's Mark's wallet. He dropped it when he fled the scene. Emma searches through Mark's wallet. Oh, how funny. He never kept any cash on him. Inside is a a love letter from Elena to Mark. Oh, my God. As well as a meeting location. Emma walks into the hospital room and she kicks it open as she goes, let me tell you something, Elena. You killed her, didn't you? Elena gusts for help. I'm dying, help me. The poison is coursing through her veins. She's going into some sort of shock. Emma smashes the nurse button and the doctor runs in and the doctor says, she's in V-fib. Quick detective, bring me the epi kit, hurry. So Emma does. Why does Emma have to get stuff? Kind of feels like an understaffed hospital. She gets the kit uh, just in time. The doctor saves Elena. Emma notes that Elena had the same green lines around her lips as Veronica did. My bag, the lipstick. Here, doctor, you can do a test on this lipstick. Now listen up, Elena, I got some questions. Why did you kill your sister? And also, tell me about this. How come the watch says 8.55 or whatever the time was, and the time of death was later than that? And she goes, oh, oh, well, the thing was... Mark was making a new round of cocktails in the bar when Veronica went on the deck to catch some fresh air. Suddenly, something exploded. Fire, smoke, it was awful. I must have passed out because I don't remember anything else. You didn't answer the damn question. You flirted with Mark, didn't you? No, I would never, no. What's the place in this photograph? Oh, it's the meeting location where I was going to meet with Mark. It's his office. Mark is a cosmetic manufacturer. So it wasn't actually an affair. That was just a red herring. He is in fact just doing business dealings. Suddenly the doctor comes back and says, the same poison that was used on Veronica is the same poison that was on this lipstick. Yeah, we know. Oh. You know what, ad time? He's here. He's here. Ah, my favorite mystery family. Look at you this. brought Raycons. You know what they say, a family that raised together stays together. <laughs> All right, who wants a wing and who wants a leg piece? I can barely get through it. Man, these things sure are durable and well made. My knife, it keeps slipping off these silky rubber tips. Oh, they're so well made. But wait, Sangor, are those brand new Raycons? We all know your bank balance is zero. Spoiler alert for later in the game. There's no way you could afford Raycons. Uh, well, uh. But in missing from his lapel, scraggly beard, you must be money laundering. I'm sharing a turkey with the world's most notorious criminal. 
put your hands behind your back, you're under arrest. No, it's okay, Pixel Man. Raycon has a bunch of buy now, pay later options. It's all a part of making Christmas shopping easy this year. Ah, I suppose I'll just go to buyraycon.com slash story mode then and get 20% off site wide. We're not expecting anyone else, are we? Oh my God. But wait a minute, I didn't pay for shipping. What's in the box? It's got a human head, isn't it? Skimpy outfit tied up here. Elena, you son of a bitch, put your hands up. Wait, Pixel Man, this season's Raycons come with free shipping. Look, you don't have to pay a thing. Guys, I don't want to alarm you, but I've been using my Raycons for nearly 32 hours and they're still going. So, uh, who do you think killed that guy? By Raycon.com slash story mode. Whoa. So, who was the murderer, Pixel Man? Ha ah, ah, yes. Uh... It's... Uh, Mark! <laughs> First, distract target. Block blind jab. Discombobulate. <laughs> Break jaw. Discombobulate. <laughs> My god, his Raycons aren't even falling out. What a snug fit and feel. It must be that silky rubber bit. Ah, uh, he must have gone to buyraycon.com slash story mode. That son of a bitch, he must have got 30% off holiday bundles. Rad time over. All right. Summary time. There's a ship and on the ship is Mark, Elena and Veronica. Now the ship exploded <gasps> and Veronica died. No, not Veronica. However, when her body washed up on shore, yeah. the police determined that her cause of death wasn't the explosion or drowning, but rather poisoning. What a mystery. Now Mark is the main suspect because he's a cosmetics manufacturer and the poison used to kill Veronica was found on the lipstick. Oh my god! I'm gonna go tell my family about this mystery. And now you're all up to speed. Chapter 3 Emma is off to Mark's office. Get me there, she says. And when she arrives, ah, there seems to be a note on the door. Closed for renovation by order of... Veronica. <laughs> so Emma picks the lock and then heads into Mark's office to see what she can find. The office looks like it has been robbed and there's broken stuff everywhere. There's a guard dog there for some reason and it's holding a camera. Emma does some stuff and she grabs the camera, but it's got old school film in it and so it has to be developed. Ah, I will hold on to this for later. So she goes and she finds Mark's phone card and she uses that to access Mark's voicemail. Veronica, my sweet love, if you're listening to this, she has probably eliminated me. Save yourself. Take the evidence we collected and show it to the police. They'll protect you from your family. I love you, Veronica. Forever. What? Says Emma. This voicemail implies that someone was out to kill Mark. Mark, and you gotta hurry it up. I can't stay in this mortal plane much longer. Get to the point. Okay, so they get the password to the laptop. And on the laptop, this is the important bit. When she opens the laptop, there is some footage, and on that footage, Stan Gore and a mysterious gentleman talking. In the foreground, you can see lots of cash, which is normal for a bank owner, but lots of guns, which is not as normal. What could it mean? The laptop then shows Emma a map and some coordinates where that meeting took place. Turns out it's a warehouse. So Emma hops into her police escort and says, take me to the warehouse. And she heads there next. Now on the way, Duke calls Emma. Mark went to meet Stan Gore at the warehouse on the... Repository Lane 28. How did you know? I'm going to march into that building and ask Mark the hard questions. I'm going to play good cop, bad cop, but it's just me, so it'll average out to neutral cop. Don't worry, Duke. I'm on my way. Wait. Something's going on in there. I'm going in. No! Duke's going in without backup! Don't do it! Emma asked the police officer. You gotta call for backup. But then, plot twist. There won't be any backup. What? Why? You've discovered too much. What do you mean? The officer Bye, then bitch. jumps out the car while still moving, and the car <laughs> flies off a cliff. Uh. What? The car lands in the water and begins filling up. Oh no, I hope she doesn't have to do some sort of mini game. 
She puts stuff in a plastic bag, she smashes the window, and then she swims to the surface. She has survived the double cross. Double survived it, in fact. Now, Emma gets a text message, and it's from an anonymous number. It's a photo of Duke, <gasps> tied to a chair. Wait, how do they know she's still alive? Didn't they just try to kill her? Why would they assume that their plan didn't work? Don't worry about that, Your Majesty. The text says, he is being held hostage. Emma, you must go to the warehouse alone if you want Duke back in one piece. So Emma texts back, okie dokie, like a big thumbs up. But if I'm to save Duke, I need to hitch a ride from the side of the road. But I can't get to the road because I'm down here. Oh, I couldn't possibly walk around. As Emma, the world's most resourceful detective, I have a plan. You gotta go over to this disused car. <laughs> Notice how there's a cushion underneath the rock? Well, pump, pump, pump that one up so the boulder moves. Once that's off, you can lift up the lid. Inside is a bunch of treasure. And within the treasure, you find a hazard sign and an apple, <laughs> which is top. fresh. Now, once you've moved the butterfly, you can access tools. Now that you've got that wrench set, hold on, stay with me. Now that you've got that wrench set, you find an umbrella, which for some reason has a pipe as a sleeve. Now undo that pipe sleeve and you've got two metal rods. Now that saved about two minutes because you don't have to walk around. You can climb directly up the wall. Watch out for scorpions and poisonous spiders though. Did it do it? Can we add some Metal Gear Solid climbing music here? So she climbs up the rocks and she makes it onto the main road. She gets to the freeway and she goes running in front of vehicles on the freeway and an ambulance comes. It stops and the door opens and it's the doctor with all the histamine cures. Emma gets in. She's, hey, can you take me to the warehouse? I got a duke to save. And then Emma makes some small talk. She says, hey, how come you're driving an ambulance? I thought you were a doctor. Ah, I'm just borrowing it. Well, that seems strange, says Emma. Then all of a sudden, over the radio. Ambulance 45, return to the garage immediately. You're not supposed to. Then the doctor turns off the radio before the lady speaking can finish. Oh my god, he's got something to hide. Emma, being a detective, can tell that this guy is a real <laughs> sussy fella. Right, she's just gone into her mind palace and she's putting together all the clues. Hospital direction, stolen ambulance, doctor, handsome. Coincidence? Missing wristwatch, poison, he's driving an automatic ambulance. There's no cup holders. Oh my god, he didn't borrow that ambulance, he's stolen this ambulance. They stop and the doctor attacks. We've arrived, detective. No, he's going to molest me. Emma quickly grabs the briefcase and smashes Dr. Gone Bad right in the face. Now that he's unconscious, she starts rummaging through his pockets and she finds a note. The note has instructions to capture Emma. Oh my god, he was in on the plot the whole time. It says, deliver Emma to the warehouse alive. But wait, they just tried to kill her. Wait, I want to know where that policeman was that leapt out of the car. Was he just, like, because he wasn't there on the road anymore. At the bottom of the note is an SD card, which Emma takes. Then Emma opens the glove box and inside is a tablet and a cable. She plugs it into the dash and then she does a quick mini game and that hacks the tablet or something. And then the tablet plays a video and the video is of Mark being interrogated. Oh no. By the way, this is the interrogator's real voice. We're not doing a bad impression. This is real. Tell us, where is the video? He seemed to like it. Now, when they say, where's the video, they're talking about this security camera footage, remember? Okay, maybe we need a recap. Emma Emerson is heading towards the makeup warehouse. Duke is already there, and it seems like he's about to get into a fight. Along the way, turns out the cop that had been escorting us the whole time was crooked and tried to kill us. <gasps> Emma Emerson survives, gets to the road, and hitches a ride in an ambulance. And inside the ambulance is the doctor from before with all the histamines, remember? Turns out the doctor is actually Dr. Gone Bad and he tries to attack us because he's in on it too. But Emma decides to defend herself for once and grabs the briefcase and knocks him out. And she finally makes her way to the warehouse. Finally, 
Emma has made it to the makeup factory. Oh, God. But how can she get inside? Well, she could stack all these boxes. She could just simply climb the truck. Oh, look, there's a crane hook. Or instead, she shall go over to a sewer grate. Then I cut open the bottom of a truck. Once that's open, for some reason, I let all the bits spill out into the sewer drain. Dwee. And then I grab the ladder, look at a schematics of what a ladder looks like, then grab some pliers, take those pliers over to a toy trumpet, I then grab the honky horn thing for later. I then open the box. Upon seeing that there are six roof tiles, I start breaking them with my fist. Underneath one of them is a magnet. I take the magnet and I walk back over to the sewer grate. I hope that the sewer grate itself isn't magnetic. Grab all of those, put them into the ladder, thus reassembling it, and then put the ladder up against the wall. Simple as anything. But there are bars on the window. Oh no, Emma goes back to the ambulance. We bust into the ambulance. Why would they have a mock skeleton? Did someone die in here a long, long time ago? So Emma finds the liquid acid in the back of the ambulance, and then she climbs the ladder, and then she pours acid all over the window lock, which is far more effective than the pliers she had earlier, and she throws herself inside. There, inside, the first thing she notices is a metal cabinet. She notices it because it is shaking violently. You know what it is? Mummy. Yeah, it says, like, don't dead open inside. It's me, Lady Sherlock Holmes. I got a solution for this puzzle. What you have here is a genuine lock. Now, I do have a bat on me and a pocket knife tool. Too easy. No, I've got a much better idea. Watch this, Dr. Watson. So I go over to the vent where there is a spinning fan. Then I undo all of the screws with my pocket knife, perhaps. Upon opening it, Dr. Watson, you will notice that there is a cog wheel. So I jam a baseball bat into the fan. And once I have grabbed the cog wheel and also a random crank, I go over to a series of cogs, put a crank inside. I then use that to lower a box. I put a valve wheel on a pressure gauge. Turning it, you will notice that the steam comes to cessation of output, Dr. Watson. And once I have solved the steam dilemma, I shall unlatch a series of apartment safety locks. Upon doing that, it opens a box. There is some sort of device and a bolt cutter. Now, we take the bolt cutters. A wrench, a power drill, and a lollipop over to the metal cabinet. And we cut the chain. She opens it up, and there is Stan. <gasps> and he's tied up inside. Emma then tries to wake up Stan. Hello, by yelling in his ears. And it doesn't work. So <laughs> instead, Emma takes his wallet. Inside the wallet is a key card for the door beside the cabinet. Emma uses it and continues on to the next room. There are two enemies standing in here. But luckily for Emma, they're standing beneath a crane. Emma uses the crane's control box to drop big metal bars on the thugs. There's also a photo roll developing machine here. So Emma uses it to develop the roll of film she got from Mark's warehouse. Remember, from before the camera? And that roll of film reveals that Stan Gore was also on the yacht on that fateful night. All right, he knows something about his daughter's death. That means when he came running up, he was faking all of this. Emma goes back to Stan and using a car air freshener she found, wakes him up as if it's smelling <laughs> salts. Mmm, <laughs> the refreshing scent of pine. Emma confronts him about the yacht. What do you know about the yacht? And what do you know about boats in general? And Stan says, oh, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I just thought this super high histamine version of the lipstick would look really good. Your lips would look juicy all day long. And then just as he's getting through this long-winded explanation, the crooked police officer and the crooked doctor, Dr. Gone Bad. <laughs> suddenly show up. They taser Emma. Oh no! What will happen next? What will the bad guys do to her? How will Emma emerge out of this sticky predicament? Chapter 7 Emma is now captured. Oh no! But luckily, she is super detective and she is able to wriggle out of her restraints. And then she climbs into a vent. She makes her way through the building. Suddenly she's in the kitchen, but by choice, she doesn't have to be there. 
All right, why is she in a kitchen? It turns out this kitchen is actually connected to the Gore Mansion. So there's like right. the warehouse, and that's connected to this kitchen, uh, and that's connected to the mansion. Okay. Now, a thug calls over the loudspeaker to the kitchen staff. <laughs> Hello, kitchen staff. Now, she has to stop them from coming down, right? So she's going to play along. Yes, I'm still here, sir. Hola, kitchen lady. <laughs> Two daiquiris, pronto. Emma says, oh, no problem. Then she goes and she finds some sleeping pills in one of the kitchen. How convenient. So anyway, she puts them in the drinks and then she sends the drinks up the dumbwaiter to the guards and the guards drink them and go, oh, me so sleepy, take a nap. And Emma finds a key and unlocks the kitchen she's in. And then she walks outside and is immediately <laughs> spotted by a guard. My God, she's good. The guard throws a bottle of wine at her. But Emma grabs a mirror and says, I'm going to deflect the bottle. <laughs> and then they get into fisticuffs. <sighs> it's fighting time. Anyway, she wins and she gets to Elena's room. Now, inside Elena's room is one of the guards and he is fast asleep because he drank that daiquiri. So Emma quickly ties him up, but then just as she's finished, she turns around and... <gasps> Big dramatic scene. A strange gentleman is there. <laughs> Oh, romantic interest. <gasps> He's got a gun. <laughs> Never mind. He knocks Emma out and leaves with Elena. Emma regains consciousness and she's still in Elena's room. She then finds Elena's diary and reads it. Ooh. Oh, okay. Spicy. Yeah, what does it say? Now, the diary entry above the photo says that Elena hates Veronica and Mark. That sounds like motive to me. Shoot at will. <laughs> Elena is actually trying to help her father save the family bank. Now, the bank needs saving because Veronica and Mark have been spending money like crazy on this stupid makeup factory where the makeup kills everyone. This is the killer eyeshadow palette. Emma reconstructs another photo and there's another diary entry and it talks about how Elena has met a man who makes her very happy. Oh, that's lovely. I just hope he doesn't find out that I'm almost broke. Just one last photo to reconstruct. So, this photo is a bunch of past due notes. Ah, memories. Emma then leaves the room. She solves more puzzles and behind a painting is a safe. In that safe is a gun and also a USB labeled My Confession. He got it engraved. <laughs> <laughs> she then takes the gun and starts firing it wildly at the locked door. So behind the door is Stan's room. And Stan is dead. Someone shot this man to death. No, it wasn't the gun. He's actually poisoned. <gasps> There's a note in Stan's hands. What does it say, your majesty? I'm the one who killed my daughter Veronica. And for that, I am going to poison myself. I'm sorry. Also, Elena gets all my money. Big saws, everyone. Emma then plugs the My Confession USB into the TV, and on the USB is a video of Stan. <laughs> the time has come for me to confess my secrets, just in case something happens to me. Stan states the Gore Bank almost went bankrupt, but they were saved by Elena's new gentleman friend. Ooh. The gentleman helped the family, but then used the bank as a front for his gun smuggling operation. When I wanted to stop him, the gentleman threatened my family. So Stead asked Veronica and Mark for help. And Veronica and Mark, they acquired a video of the man's involvement in illegal weapons. That was a video that we found on the laptop oh, earlier, remember? Ah, oh, we got you now, mysterious stranger. But the gentleman saw the camera. As a result, Veronica was poisoned. Elena was attacked and Mark went missing. Oh yeah, where is Mark right now? Stan has gathered all the files concerning the gentleman's gun smuggling and locked them away in the bedroom safe. So Emma opens the safe. Inside is all the evidence that Emma needs to stop this gun trafficking scheme. The guns are all stored on another yacht. They're going bankrupt and they've got two yachts? <laughs> and Emma thinks, oh, Duke must be there as well. Emma then leaves and goes to the garage and hot wires the family car. The family They've got two yachts and one car? <laughs> what can I say? They're more ocean people, I guess. Emma is now at the yacht. So Emma climbs aboard. 
but uh uh-oh, the crooked cop is there. He then shoots Emma, kabang, which knocks Emma out what she fucking shot with a blow dart? What happened? Okay, it's very logical, right? And it turns out her police badge blocked the bullet. That would not happen. Emma sees the yacht sailing away into the distance. No! (laughs) Don't worry, Your Majesty. There's a speedboat right there. So Emma chases the yacht in the speedboat. Aha! You'll never catch up to me, says the mysterious stranger. I have a harpoon gun! She, like, cocks it back. (laughs) So Emma's chasing with the speedboat. So Emma uses the harpoon gun, and she fires it into the yacht. Good thing I've gone whaling before. She climbs across the rope. Emma lands on the yacht. Aha, where's Duke? (gasps) There he is. He's trapped in a cage. Emma overhears on her walkie-talkie that the crooked cop is coming to check on Duke. There's just enough time to set a trap. What is that trap? Emma finds a garrote, and then she runs over to the stairs, which are made of wood, and she starts sawing away at one of the steps, and then she goes and hides. Officer Devious comes down the steps, steps on the wonky stair, (gasps) and... It collapses, and he falls to his death. Emma then searches the body and she finds the code to Duke's cage. She unlocks Duke, but Duke (gasps) is wearing a bomb vest. Oh no. Wait, why is he smiling? He's got got a bomb on him. So anyway, they disarm a bomb. Duke says, thank you for saving me. All right, let's go arrest the strange gentleman. He's at the back of the boat, let's go. Also, Mark is dead. He was interrogated to death. Lamau. They make it to the speedboat in time, and Elaine and the gentleman are there. The gentleman points a gun at Duke and Emma. I knew that messing with the two best damn cops on the beat was a bad idea. My plans have been practically foiled by this point. I'm gonna make a getaway. Please, nobody chase me. It's over, gentlemen. The police are on their way. <laughs> Coast Guard will be here any minute. Emma says to Elena, the gentleman, he's bad. <laughs> We have the evidence the lipsticks were poisoned by his henchmen. Ah, I'm not bad. I'm not bad at all. And he shoots at Emma. (gasps) Oh my god. Jumps in front of the bullet and he takes it. In the commotion, the gentleman has gotten away in a speedboat. Oh, not again. But he left Elena behind. What have I done, my family? Duke is shot in the arm, so he's okay. Oh, fuck now. And Elena is like, I'll take care of Duke. You go after him. I don't him. trust her. She's been working <laughs> with the gentleman. Elena's convinced he's bad now. I was a bad judge of character. From now on, I'll only date Mark or Duke. Now, Emma isn't going to let this mysterious gentleman just escape that easily. So Emma grabs a harpoon gun and some water skis. She shoots a harpoon right into the... Back of his head. <laughs> Nice! <laughs> no, just into the speedboat. Oh. She's going water skiing. Whoa! So the gentleman drags her around for a bit, left and right, but she makes it on board. Now it's time for some fisty cuffs. And Emma knocks him out. She has just saved the day. She handcuffs the corpse of the mysterious gentleman. Then she pulls a wicked sick 180 in her boat and drives back to shore. There they prop up the corpse of the mysterious stranger, a la Weekend at Bernie's. And then she goes and talks to Duke, her one true love. The end. All right, Q&A. Okay, I'm going to be honest, there's some bad voice acting in these Family Mysteries games. No, they tried their hardest. Let me have a quick look. Forever. Yeah. I like how you only need one word to prove the point. I have a real problem with the way they shoehorned in all of these bizarre elements with the doctor being in on it, Mm -hmm. the other police officer being in on it. Instead of him just turning around and shooting her, he threw the car off the cliff. Now, I presume that is to make it look like an accident. The only problem with that is she survives. She climbs up the rock face. She gets onto the road and then immediately uh, there's an ambulance there. It seems like a complete coincidence, but he has a note that says, go get her. So unless they knew she would survive. What was the point? What was the point of sending the ambulance out? It just, it just did not make any sense. Mm. 
play it off like it's Mark who poisoned the lipstick, but it was the strange gentleman who did it. Correct. He poisoned the lipstick to make it look like it was Mark who did it, but then he threw the body overboard to make it look like the body drowned, and then he blew up the yacht as well, so it's like three red herrings stacked on top of each other. And why was the dad there? He comes racing up and he's like, Ooh, my daughter. <laughs> but he must have known the plan, right? Because... He was on the boat. I actually don't understand what happened in this game. So <laughs> I don't, I, you know what? I don't get it. They're not expecting two grown adults to waste many hours cutting down our, one of their games just to point out uh, faults in the plot. You know what? I know what this game is. This is where you play it with a parent. Mums would play it. Mm -hmm. it. I suppose it doesn't really need to make sense. It'd be nice if it did, but... You know, you could imagine like, oh yeah, me and dad on a Sunday afternoon. Come on, son. You gotta, you know, swab the cadaver's lips for histamine. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice. Anything else? We did it. We found out the family mystery. My work here is done, everyone. Goodbye. Hello, I'm King Charles. I'll make you proud, mummy. Whatever. All right, the end. Goodbye. <laughs>